with everyone. And thank you so much for the invitation to be here with you on this day, beautiful Sabbath day. I don't generally share nuggets because there's always so much to share. Um, but I pray that today, that what we do have to share with you today will be a blessing. I'm going to just share my screen and pray that all will go well. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Just want to introduce myself. I'm Jacqueline Brown from a, a um, uh, ministry called Medical Missionary Group. Um, we're based in Scotland. And a few years ago, we had the privilege of coming down to Gloucester um, to have a long weekend with you all. And on Sunday, we cooked together, which was such a blessing. Um, and it's wonderful to, to be back, to be able to share um, these health nuggets with you um, today and for the rest of the week. May God bless us all as we, um, we come together in his name. And please don't forget to invite family and friends and enemies and neighbors and whomsoever the Lord puts on your heart. Okay, so I will now attempt to share my screen again. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so. Um, that situation again. All right. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, the enemy is just trying to throw all kinds of spanner in the works, but his power is defeated against the mighty power of our God. And so I continue God's plan. Um, and today the health nugget is going to be based on godly trust. Now you may know God's plan as new start or celebration or some other acronym, but um, the, the, it's the same thing. But with God's plan, godly trust is number one because he says, seek me first and my righteousness and all the other things, the water and the exercise and the, the temperance will be added. All the other things will be added unto you. And so we begin with godly trust on that and pray that the Lord will increase our trust in him and will enable us to um, put into practice that which we learn. So godly trust, we're going to be looking individually at each and every one of these um, from day to day to day. Godly trust, open air, daily exercise, sunshine, plenty of rest, lots of, lots of water, always temperate nutrition. And today's focus, as you know, um, is going to be godly trust. Now applied individually, each health law is very effective, but combined, the benefits are multiplied beyond what each one could do by itself. In, you know, in today's fast paced life, people often feel so pressured and stressed so full of pain, disappointment, and hopelessness that they are willing to risk their health and even their lives on almost anything that promises relief. And we've met many people like this um, through our ministry, whether in-house or as a consultation or however the Lord chooses to enable us to meet individuals in our ministry. And if you have been searching for something to take away your stress, your pain, your brokenness, your anger, your, your, your frustrations, you would have found that nothing ever seems to bring lasting results, nothing. And just as one thing gets settled, another problem arises which needs, to, which needs an, another response. And you're forever going on this treadmill, treadmill over and over again. But there is only one who has promised to satisfy the thirst of the soul. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This is found in John chapter four, verse 14. So Jesus here is making the claim that he is the only one that can satisfy the thirst of the soul. 
Nothing else will. We met young people who use drugs, who use drink, who use um, um, tobacco, who use various different, even food kinds of ways to, to quieten, to quench, to, to comfort the grieving heart. Jesus says, I am the only one, the only way, the truth and the life. You know, the frontal lobe is where we communicate with God. Today, as we communicate with God, as we praise, as we worship, as we, uh, we fellowship with one another, we're using our frontal lobe through prayer, reading the Bible and singing to him. The frontal lobe is also the control center of the immune system. So a healthy relationship with your creator actually gives you and I a healthier and strong immune system. Isn't that wonderful? In this world of, of, of disease and viruses and bacteria and fungi, we need a healthy and strong immune system. Research has shown that having faith adds an average of seven years to your life. Wow. In virtually every one of more than a thousand studies examining the effects of spirituality on healing, a powerful link was found between faith and longevity. Isn't this amazing? So our faith actually strengthens us. Our faith strengthens our immune system. Our faith even gives us longer life. Why? Because we are not found to be stressing. You know, it doesn't mean that stresses won't come. They will come. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But we focus on the be of good cheer. I have overcome already. So take hold of my strength and I will take you through whatever dark valley you may find. What a wonderful, wonderful promise. The human brain produces and secretes hormones into the system when it is happy and experiencing joy and peace, which is what we generally experience when we are at the foot of the cross of Christ. These hormones invigorate and strengthen every cell of the body. True joy and peace come from a knowledge of God and trust in him. So even if you're going through calamity, even the fact that you can bring your woe to the foot of the cross and say, Lord, help me, that in itself gives such a peace because you have somewhere, you have someone to cry to who you know can help you. So the brain also produces other hormones that cause a toxic reaction in the whole system, affecting the metabolism of every cell. These hormones are produced when experiencing fear, anger, frustration, hate, envy, and guilt. Wow, we have all experienced fear in one capacity or another in the past 18 months, right? And some people are gripped by fear. So much so that it pushes them to do things that they would not do otherwise. And that's why God says, come to me, bring your fears, and I will help you to see it in the light that is, it, it can be, you know, that, that it's actually in so that you can make better choices. But if not, if it's suppressed and repressed and it's not dealt with, each of these, and if we have all of these combined, can lead to disease. And we might say, oh, but I have a good diet. Oh, but I drink water. Oh, but I exercise. Okay, where are you mentally? Where is your trust in God? Because it will help to deal with all the things on the right hand of the screen. Did you know that one minute of anger, that could be the health nugget. If you remember nothing else, remember that one minute of anger can suppress your immune system for six hours. If you remember nothing else this morning, one minute of anger can suppress your immune system for six hours. And so therefore within those six hours, if anyone comes and sneezes near you, oh well, your immune system is well nigh suppressed and depressed and you will catch whatever it is that has just been sneezed out. Thoughts are accompanied by corresponding feelings. If the thoughts are wrong, the feelings will be wrong. If the thoughts run in the channel of complaining, distrust, suspicion, murmuring, jealousy, envy, resentment, or anger, 
the feelings will be dark and gloomy. Such feelings have a positive poisonous effect on the glands, the blood, the stomach, the liver, the heart, and indeed the whole body. So you see, we poison ourselves really with our thoughts. And this is why it's important that we allow God to take control of every thought. But as we come before him today, let us remember this. Let us remember to keep our wants, our joys, our sorrows, our cares, and our fears before God. You cannot, we cannot burden him. We cannot weary him. Take to him everything that perplexes the mind. Nothing is too great for him to bear. For he holds up worlds. He rules over all the affairs of the universe. Nothing that in any way concerns our peace, my peace and your peace is too small for him to notice. There is no chapter in our experience too dark for him to read. There is no perplexity too difficult for him to unravel. No calamity can befall the least of his children. No anxiety harass the soul, no joy, cheer, no sincere prayer escape the lips of which our heavenly father is unobservant or in which he takes no immediate interest. What a wonderful text found in Steps to Christ, page 100. And so as we continue to worship God in spirit and in truth, may he help us to remember to bring all before him and to trust that he is able to deal with all the things that perplexes and that affect our lives. May God bless us as we continue to worship. Amen.